Are you daring enough to try a kinetics technique for the infamous IT band? So of all the techniques that I have in my kinetics toolkit, which involves stepping on people, this one technique has made the most people cry in my private practice, but they all thank me after. And today, I wanna to actually break down the IT band terrain for you, and then challenge you to find a partner so you can try one of my techniques for yourself. I'll never forget one of my very first client success stories back in 2009. I was a massage therapist, I was brand new to this entire field, and I was working in a chiropractor's office. Uh, she had actually forbidden me from stepping on people. She wanted me to stick with massage, but every single client that came into this office was in pain and none of them were really getting lasting results with chiropractic and massage. And I was convinced that if I could just step on people, our work together you know, during that hour would be way more effective and my clients would actually get the results that they were in my office to get. So I began experimenting with my forearms, my elbows, my fists, whatever I could do on the massage table that would actually simulate stepping on people. You know, I was trying to get as close to that as I could without breaking the rules. So I asked this one client of mine, she was an older woman in her 70s, if she would be willing to experiment with me. She had excruciating hip pain that had not resolved with months of chiropractic and massage. So I asked her if she'd be willing to try something that would involve her actually performing movements. She would remain clothed on the massage table and she agreed. And to my surprise and hers, because I was brand new to this, right? I, I really didn't know what to expect doing this type of work. We found softball sized knots or fascial adhesions in her IT band hamstring junction. So we worked our way from her knee to her hip and it only took three passes of, you know, different spots, three different spots basically, um, of working those fascial adhesions with her performing movement. Um, and when she actually got off the table, she was pain-free. She probably cried a few tears of agony during that experience, but it was only a couple of minutes. And then she thanked me afterwards. And it was in that moment that I knew that this whole compression and movement and stepping on people thing would be really powerful. Okay, so there is one part of the IT band fascia that you just can't get with a foam roller. And it's a primary cause of hip and leg pain as well as a telltale sign of pelvic instability and glute inhibition, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. And the IT band is really more like a giant tendon than a muscle since it's made up mostly of really thick sheaths of fascia. And these fascial sheaths or the muscle that is the IT band act to stabilize you from knee to hip as you stand, walk, hike, run, play. And you actually really want this muscle to be taut from knee to hip so that it can stabilize you. We don't want a really loose IT band, right? Because that could actually destabilize us at the knee or the hip or both. And honestly, I have some beef with this industry teaching so many people how to roll the IT band from knee to hip. It's something I see all the time, not only online, but in gyms. And this basically rolls out that tissue like pizza dough. And basically, if you're successful in changing the tissue, you're elongating it from knee to hip, but you're kind of smooshing it down to the femur and actually gluing it there even more. So you're creating more density instead of less and creating something longer when you want it to be taut. So do we actually want to release the IT band? Yes, of course we do. But here's the thing, this is really important. What we wanna do is actually unstick the IT band fascia, right, the fascia that wraps it from the quad fascia or from the hamstring fascia or from the femur bone, the thigh bone, or it could actually be getting glued there and then not gliding for you through movement. So you do want to release the IT band, but you just don't want to roll it like that. So I wanna describe how the IT band gets stuck to your quad and then why you might wanna release it there, which you can do with my self-help techniques. And then I'm gonna show you that kinetics technique that I challenged you with at the beginning that's gonna get this other part of the hamstring IT band junction that's really challenging to get with a foam roller. So when the IT band fascia gets stuck to your quad fascia, you might experience 
any of the following. And this is actually just a short, quick list. Anterior hip pain, groin strains or pain, IT band syndrome, lateral knee pain, sciatica, and pelvic instability due to hip imbalances, which can lead to actually head to toe pain, anything from plantar fasciitis to knee pain, hip pain, low back pain, mid back pain, and even shoulder pain to name just a few. So unsticking your IT band from that quad fascia is actually really important for all of us, right? Because we sit so much and this is actually some of that fascia that gets gluey and sticky and adhesed when we sit so much is that quad IT band fascial junction. And as I said, you can get these pretty well, actually really well using a foam roller um, with my self-help techniques. And I have a few versions of that on the channel. So we'll link to a couple of them below in the description. But what I really wanted to show you today is how your IT band fascia gets stuck to your hamstring fascia and how to release that using a partner if you dare. But first, before I show you that technique, I wanna just talk about why the hamstring IT band junction gets so fascially adhesed like this. There's actually a reason for it. And then some of the things that you might be experiencing if you have those adhesions in this area. So your IT band fascia usually gets stuck to your hamstring fascia because of pelvic instability and lack of gluteus medius or maximus activation. So when that happens, your lateral stabilizing muscles and fascia, including your IT band, take over for your inactive glutes during just about every human activity, from sitting to standing, walking, deadlifting, kettlebells, squats, yoga, tennis, <laughs> you name it. And going through those activities without glute activation results in these giant adhesions. Or if you ever fell onto your hip or your tailbone, then these fascial adhesions can form there due to that impact trauma. And when you have giant fascial adhesions like this in your IT band hamstring junction, you might experience glute pain, piriformis syndrome, posterior or side hip pain, leg pain, and even plantar fasciitis. So the technique you're about to see has actually been one of my go-to techniques with my private practice clients to eliminate persistent heel pain. And usually it's heel pain that is on the outside of that heel. All right, so this you know, area is obviously, it's that IT band hamstring junction. It's in the posterior tissue in the space between your dense IT band fascia and what you would normally think of as your hamstrings, but it's not all the way on the backside. And many of my clients have had grapefruit-sized adhesions there, and these are the people that tend to cry when we're releasing them. It's really intense. And these adhesions can actually pull on your glutes and your hip, blocking blood flow and nerve communication, and then pulling the pelvis even further out of alignment. So one of the most common things that people have told me that has become like a telltale sign to me that they have these adhesions here is that they can't sleep at night on their side without experiencing hip pain that wakes them up. So if this is you, then chances are you have these uh, adhesions in your hamstring IT band junction as well. Um, so we have an obstacle to overcome together if you're gonna try the kinetics technique I wanna show you uh, because normally, I'm standing on a set of custom-made wooden blocks with my client's or partner's leg resting on the other set of blocks. And this actually allows me to get the leverage I need by using gravity to add weight to their thigh or IT band instead of stepping up onto them from the ground, which makes me somewhat ineffective. However, you don't have these blocks, right? And I promise there's really nothing in your house that can substitute. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried stacking books, which is way too dangerous to step on. Um, I've tried stacking cushions and pillows and that might work okay and maybe is something you're gonna have to try. But we're gonna go for a modified version today. First though, I wanna show you this technique as it's meant to be done with the blocks so that you actually know what you're aiming for. You wanna know what your goal is and what it should actually look like. And then I'll show you what you can try at home. So when I palpate, their leg, whoever I'm stepping on, I'm doing so really gently with barely any weight. If I stomped on someone's IT band, they probably would run out of the room and never come back. So I'm looking for that telltale feeling of density that suggests to me there's an adhesion under my foot. And when I find it, I carefully add weight. 
just enough to compress the adhesion to their femur. I am not pinning them all the way down to the blocks. If I did that, we would just compress and stretch tissue and we'd never really get the adhesion to shear, which is what will actually create change and then make that adhesion disappear. So we're going for that compression shearing effect or the clunk that I'm always talking about. So as the person I'm stepping on is moving their leg, they're extending out, I have to allow them to move. They need to be really relaxed for this or it won't work. So then they're gonna rotate their leg. I grab the adhesion with my foot and force it to stay under my foot while they move. And this is what causes that shearing effect. So you'll notice that I'm using a lot of my foot because we're actually covering a lot of ground or territory during this technique. And I usually aim for three rotations back and forth, getting a clunk each way. So six clunks, hopefully that is our goal. And then we'll repeat this in at least two other spots in the IT band. And when we get to the high area near the hip, this is almost always where those grapefruit sized adhesions are that cause hip pain during sleep or while you're awake. Okay, now it's your turn to try this. Are you ready? So here's my disclaimer. This looks easier than it is. In, in video. This technique is one of the hardest to learn actually and do with skill. A lot of my students took months or even years before being able to get it on most clients. So I'm not gonna be able to break this down in great, great detail, right? Because we'd be here all day actually learning kinetics, the method and the principles and how to do it well no matter what body part you're stepping on. But I wanna give you something that you can just try today. And I also wanna leave room for possibility that you will get a clunk. So what I want you to do is actually watch me. Watch what I'm about to show you. Skip back and watch it again. Watch, pause the video, try it. Watch, pause the video, try it. That is actually what's going to help you figure this out. As long as you're being safe, you'll be doing some good here. So even if you don't get a clunk, you'll still help your body or your partners and your fascia or their fascia. And if, if you happen to have meditation cushions at home, you're gonna to wanna to use them here. That's what I'm gonna use. But if not, you could try couch pillows or I have found that a sleeping bag, you know, just rolled up actually works pretty good for this too. But you need something to basically prop your partner's knee up on. So in this video you're about to see, I am using meditation cushions that I have here. So you'll also need something to balance with. You'll see me using a pole but I recommend just some high backed chair would work fine. Now their leg needs to be at two 90 degree angles at their hip and at their knee. And then you want their hips to be as close to stacked on top of each other as possible. You, if you're the one doing the stepping are gonna use your left foot to step on their left leg or your right foot to step on their right leg. If you don't use the correct foot here, your chances of getting the adhesion go way down. So make sure you use the correct foot. You're gonna start by palpating. And if this is your first time ever trying something like this, then I want you to start in the middle of the IT band. It'll actually be a lot easier to learn this here. So you're gonna place your foot on their leg and depending on the state of their IT band fascia, that might be enough weight for them. If you feel like you need more weight, you'll lean into your leg, basically. You might even rest your arms on your thigh to do that. You're gonna see me do that in this video. And then your partner is going to very slowly extend their leg out fully, and then squeeze everything on that leg real quick, and then relax fully. And then they're going to rotate three times each way. Now your job, if you are the one stepping, is to compress that fascial adhesion and keep it pinned to the bone while your partner rotates under your weight. And this is what creates that shearing effect. And this is also the part that is harder to do well than it looks. I usually aim for three spots on the IT band, sometimes four. And as I mentioned before, it's usually that high IT band hamstring area that has those grapefruit sized adhesions. Now they can also be in the middle. Um, so you definitely wanna check the whole IT band out. And if you do happen to get a clunk, even one, Good for you. You must have really smart feet or a smart partner or both. So that's my breakdown of the IT band. And as you're doing the IT band quad fascia release or the hamstring side fascia release, you'll also be contacting 
that deep fascia that I talked about at the femur. And you'll be releasing that as you do either of these because we're rotating around the bone. So find a partner, grab a partner, have fun with this. Don't take yourself too seriously here. I know it can feel really intense. Um, and if you or your partner happens to cry, just know that that's totally normal. Hopefully you're just gonna let it happen and not make a big deal out of it. Unless of course it is a big deal. Maybe you want to celebrate having an emotional release. By the way, that client of mine in her seventies that I mentioned earlier, she, stop needing massage or chiropractic after that one session and I never saw her again. <laughs> um, the chiropractor got wind of what I was doing because I did this with more clients than just her and her cash cow started to disappear, right? Because patients were coming in weekly to see her and get massage, some of them for a year or years. So her cash cow was beginning to dwindle. She started to threaten me a little bit more and I quit um, because my goal has always been to help people in the fastest amount of time possible, right? So um, I just thought that might be interesting for you. We can get out of pain really quickly when we work with the body and give it what it needs. So if you are interested in learning kinetics, then make sure to check out the description box. I've got something special coming up and in full transparency, I will be opening an online community space to learn and practice this work from anywhere in the world. In addition to some in-person plans that I have for immersing yourself in this whole world of kinetics or stepping on people. So if this is interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed to my email list if you don't wanna miss these opportunities or just stay tuned here to the YouTube channel. For now though, I leave you to explore your IT band and hopefully get a clunk for yourself or your partner or both, hopefully. Uh, most of us tend to actually have these adhesions in us they're just lurking there and we don't even know that they're there. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to hearing about your experience below and I will see you next time. <laughs>